it's something that is always like brushed under the rug, I feel like. Like I, with my friends a lot, I'll just like, my running joke is <laughs> accessibility on campus, am I right? When I first applied to William Mary, um, I was like really worried about like accessibility issues and that was one of the things that like when I was choosing what school to go to, like I have to make sure that like they're gonna give me like the accommodations that I need in order to like, be able to function and like do well as a student. Last year I had a bone cyst and a recurring bunion um, and I was speaking to my foot surgeon because he was like, girlfriend, you're gonna need some help. He said, get a knee scooter and make your way around campus as best you can because your issue is going to get worse if you continue to wait there. Um, and so I was on a knee scooter. So I have um, chronic knee and foot pain. I really don't like all the brick pathways on campus. They're beautiful, don't get me wrong, but I think that they're not very well maintained. The bricks just as a whole are difficult to navigate because they're not all uniform and flat. There are some areas where they pop up and that's really magnified when you're on wheels. That kind of exacerbates my pain. And I guess the ways to get around those brick paths always involve stairs or hills or more uneven surfaces that just further exacerbates that pain. It became really difficult to get to classes um, and I had to really plan ahead and carve out a, probably 10 extra minutes um, to go anywhere uh, just because I didn't know what I would encounter. I lived in GGV and so even just getting up to my dorm was difficult because of the bricks um, and they were very uneven and I had a, an, a steep incline to get up to my building. Getting over to Andrews and SWIM, that region that's raised, um, that was difficult. I kind of had to figure out how to navigate the elevators in ISC and I would end up popping out in the chemistry department. There's not a lot of accessible buildings on William & Mary, which does get to be quite a problem. Um, so for instance, I major in Russian post-Soviet studies, and so a big part of like Russian studies is being part of like the language houses and like the language events. But the problem is it's on the third floor of the Randolph complex and there's no elevators. So it's hard for me to, first of all, walk that far out to campus, especially when like a lot of the events are at night and there's no like golf cart transportation. But also when I get there finally, I have to climb up three flights of stairs. And sometimes by the time I do that, like I have like my, well, my, my heart rate is elevated and I can't think straight and so like there's no real point in me going to a language event to like try and practice my Russian if I can't even think straight because like my condition is acting up because I can't physically walk up that many stairs very well. Making my way up to the swim region, um, there's a ramp over by Adair uh, and I was super thankful that there was a ramp but that was also a steep incline. I was on a knee scooter so I would just have to really push my way up the hill. Even the area over by Blair and um, Tyler and Monroe, if you're going up that hill, you can get on a sidewalk, but there's still stairs there. So um, then you'd have to kind of tilt yourself off the curb onto the road and then back on to the sidewalk. It's just not a very linear, there aren't very many linear pathways to get to where you need to go. I, I mean, you have to like basically rework the whole campus because like I'm always just like, why don't you have an elevator in these buildings? I mean, that's code, right? <laughs> but I mean, they're always like, oh, we can't put it in their old buildings. So I'm like, can we just get new buildings? And like they're renovating old buildings. And I'm just like, but that doesn't solve a lot of the problems that a lot of people have with accessibility. I think I have like the perceived idea that people on campus don't really get invisible disabilities or in invisible mobility issues. I don't know if that's just campus culture. I mean, I find that everywhere I go, because um, I mean, I don't look disabled, whatever that's supposed to mean. This one guy, one time, I, I was in the elevator and he was just like, I hate when I see people who use the elevator who don't need it. And I was just like, what is that? Like, what does that mean? Even if someone doesn't look like they need to use the elevator, there's probably plenty of reasons why they, you know, they, they do actually need to use the elevator. Also, why do only people who need to use the elevator get to use the elevator? That's just weird to me. One of the things is just don't care about who's taking the elevator. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. And like, I, there's the recent thing with Lemon, the Lemon Hall. I mean, I know people are joking, but it's like, it doesn't really get to be a joke when, like, this is a huge issue. 
Like this is a life changing issue that like a lot of people really need accessible housing. I'm catching myself kind of falling into more ignorant patterns. Um, because when I, when I was on the scooter and I would need to get into swim, I would obviously use the ramps going up to swim. And it was difficult because people like to walk up and down the ramps. And when you're going around the corner, you can't see who's there. Um, and I remember that bothering me. I was like, y'all, <laughs> this, this is like a handicap ramp. I'm trying to get up here. Um, and now I'm catching myself just walking up and down the ramp, not thinking about, you know, what it's for, the purpose of it. Um, which I think is a dangerous thing, but you don't you don't think about it until you're not as able to move around. It's not a big deal for my able-bodied self, but for me on a scooter or for somebody on a wheelchair who really needs that um, passageway, it, it, it matters a lot. <laughs> it's the little things that really matter. Sometimes professors, they don't want to listen to <laughs> the accommodations that you have, and um, like, I'm lucky because I get to hear from other people who have also had like accessibility problems, like what professors to avoid. But it's annoying that I have to avoid classes that I would want to take otherwise because I know that the professor probably won't be accommodating of things that I need. My professors were amazing. <laughs> Praise God. They'd hold the door for me or they'd make sure I was able to get to my seat or they'd just make sure I was comfortable or able to attend whatever events or classes or, you know, if there was a change of schedule or something, they were very accommodating and making sure that I could get there. I don't know if, like, accessibility training actually does anything with professors, but, like, hammering at home that, like, you actually have to, like, listen to accommodations and, like, SAS, I would probably try and do something with that because I know it's a big problem that, like, a lot of people have, including me. I am registered with SAS, Student Accessibility Services, so that does make things a lot easier for me in a lot of ways. I'm stubborn, so I did not. I was like, I can handle things by myself, and I probably could have, so, you know, they that's probably something that would have served me well. Um, but even still, like, reaching out, and I don't know what, I don't even know what all they have to offer. I'm Leslie Henderson, I'm the Director of Student Accessibility Services, and I'm also an Associate Dean of Students here. There is a full range of ADA accommodations. We don't have a list as such because everything is very um, individualized to each student's specific needs. What we want to find out is the nexus of the student disability and whatever access issue there is with getting their needs met on the campus environment. We often talk with students about accommodations around academics or classroom. I don't have to worry quite as much about um, accessibility, accessibility issues in like classrooms. So like I get to take my tests in the Watson lab. Um, my professors are generally pretty understanding. Obviously there's a lot of history at William & Mary, include, and sometimes the historic integrity doesn't always help with ADA accessibility because preserving things in a way that's inaccessible is not great for students who need to be able to access those things. I found like um, SAS very helpful for the most part. They've helped me in being able to, so like I just gave them my documentation, explained what I needed to them, and they're like, okay, we can give you these accommodations. Um, and so that really helps me. I have like documentation that I can show my professors, like, hey, this is what I need. Um, these are people who, like, if you have any questions, like you can direct them to me or like, I have like a legal body of people like, you know, it's like ADA accommodations, you have to follow these guidelines. It's the law. For any student who's concerned that maybe there is a discrimination issue at play or they're not getting their needs met or they're not being heard about their ADA accommodations, the first step would be to contact Student Accessibility Services. We understand there's a power dynamic between students and, and professors who grade them. Um, so we would like to really help um, be the liaison in that case. You no, know, so it's nice to have like that kind of backup in case you face a professor who like doesn't really seem um, very accommodating. I would say registering with SAS is very important if a student needs to have their accessibility needs met. We can make this process so much easier if we know that what students are going through and how to support them as opposed to students trying to figure it out and make things happen on their own. It's, it's a little more challenging if they're not using this resource that we've already kind of paved the way to help students with. Even just like Asking for help, it's so, like it's such a simple thing and it, it's humbling and for somebody with pride issues myself, I'm, I was like, you know, I'm good. I can do it all myself. But the reality is you can't and it'll make your life a whole lot easier um, if you just ask for help. People around here are so kind. 
um, and professors are so accommodating. I feel like the heart is there. We definitely have a desire to serve um, people who have accessibility issues or who need um, extra help, but with just the passageways and transportation aspect, that's a little more difficult to handle. I feel like it would be a major deterrent to somebody who's looking at this school um, and who would be a, an amazing candidate or a prospective student. Um, but that would be one of the first things I'd look for as somebody who can't move around as freely. And I feel like immediately that would be something that I, it would deter me from coming here, which I think is really sad because I feel like we're missing out on some great, beautiful minds who could go here because of that.